Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where we share stories of people conforming to the letter but not the spirit of a request. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story, my stepmother didn't like the food in our favorite restaurant, so we decided to teach her a lesson. The second story, I maliciously complied with all the ridiculous rules regarding doing maintenance in the Navy, and my boss loved me for it. The third story, roommate tried to surprise us with cold showers and no gas to cook with, but accidentally provided us with about $400 in free gas service. The first story is, my French stepmother learns the hard way that Americans can cook. This happened and my brother and I are still laughing about it, except Gabrielle, said stepmother, and dad, who's embarrassed. Dad came into town to visit my brother, let's call him Mark and me, for a few days and brought Gabrielle with him. Gabrielle has her good traits, but she does have this one really nasty trait. She's notoriously picky and critical when it comes to food. You know, the stereotypical snooty and rude French character in movies and books who always complains that's not how this is done in France? She's this way when it comes to food. Going out to eat with her is embarrassing. She constantly sends back food, is insistent on food being made a certain way, and always demands certain things done a certain way. One time she asked the waiter to bring some mustard to the table. Not two minutes later, she called him back because the mustard is old. Bring us a new unopened bottle. More than once, I've had to apologize to the waitstaff on my family's behalf and told the manager that I'll vouch for them should Gabrielle leave a bad review on their site. She's made waiters and managers cry she's that bad. Honestly, I have no idea why dad puts up with her when she does that, even though I know he's just as embarrassed as Mark and I are. We can only chalk it up to Gabrielle having a magical hoo-ha. When they got here yesterday, for some reason they insisted they wanted to go out to dinner. Dad recommended our new favorite diner, which is known for its breakfast at any time of the day. We live close to a major interstate, and the saying about truckers knowing all the best diners and holes in the wall in all 50 states and then some is true. It's a greasy spoon in every sense of the word. Right out of the 1950s, every leather booth filled with truckers or locals, waitresses who automatically know the regular's orders by heart and don't put up with crap from anyone. A bustling kitchen, and while spotless, is just worn enough to let you know many people have been there. In other words, it has character. It may not look like a five-star restaurant, but it has some of the best breakfast you're ever going to eat. I was hesitant to take Gabrielle there if only because I didn't want to ruin the staff's day. Mark and I have been there enough times that the wait staff and cooks know us. However, Dad wanted Gabrielle to experience a true American classic and was offering to pay. So off we reluctantly went. Luckily, we got there during a not really busy time, so I told Dad to find a parking spot and I would go in to get us a table. The reason I did this was so I could warn the staff about Gabrielle and apologize in advance for anything she did. Fortunately, our usual waitress, let's call her Mary, thanked me for the warning and warned the rest of the staff. We go in, get our booth, and Gabrielle tries pulling her usual stunts. I won't go into everything she did because we'll be here forever, but I'll leave a highlight reel. 1. Gabrielle sent Mary back three times with the coffee because in order, it was too cold, it was too hot, and not enough cream. Finally, Mary, who doesn't let anybody push her around, just slapped the coffee pot on the table along with the cream and sugar and told Gabrielle to make do because she wasn't going back to get her D coffee. This made Mark and me chuckle and Gabrielle steam. 2. While waiting and probably still stewing from Mary's little comeback with the coffee, Gabrielle decided to accost Stephanie, who had just started, and tell her to get some fresh biscuits. Not ask, tell. Poor Stephanie, who's understandably anxious about her job, does as told, and then Gabrielle made a fuss about the packets of butter not being soft enough, despite Stephanie explaining that all the butter was kept cold for safety reasons. Gabrielle made a snide remark about how Stephanie couldn't wait five extra minutes to let the butter soften, which made Stephanie tear up, and me about ready to tell Gabrielle to go F a French chef if food was that important to her. 3. When our meals did arrive, Gabrielle was quiet during the meal, not making comments. I was unsure what was going to happen as a result. Either she really liked it, which I doubted, seeing as I've never seen her compliment anyone's cooking whenever we've gone out, or she was planning some nasty barb, which I feared. When Mary dropped off the bill, Gabrielle took it before Dad could and said she was paying. Because I was sitting next to her, Gabrielle left a big fat zero in the tip line and left a note about, it's cute that American chefs think they're good cooks when they've never stepped in a real kitchen before. Prove me wrong. Before closing the little book the receipt came in and hiding it so nobody else could see what she wrote. I was peeved when I read the note and was about ready to slap Gabrielle. 
I know the chefs and servers who work at this particular diner learn their skills on the job, and if you ask me, they have every right to be as proud of their work as someone who went to culinary school would. While I'm looking at going to culinary school myself to become a pastry chef, I respect people who've learned by working in kitchens or on the floor, because they have first-hand experience. I took out $100 using the ATM at the diner and gave it to the staff as a tip, along with an apology for her behavior, embarrassed and angry. Fortunately, they didn't hold it against us, except Gabrielle, and told me that Mark and I were always welcome back. I also had decided I was going to get back at Gabrielle. There was a benefit to this lockdown. During this time, bored out of our wits and wanting to better our skills, Mark and I have been binge-watching recipe and cooking how-to videos online, along with practicing. And while I don't like bragging, I'd say we've become quite good. We know how to smoke our own bacon, cure corned beef, make creamy scrambled eggs and bake flaky croissants, and that's just a sampling. When we got home, I told Mark my plan, and he was grinning ear to ear. The next day, while Gabrielle and Dad still slept, Mark and I got up early and got right to work. We prepared scrambled eggs, home cured and smoked bacon, biscuits and a fruit salad. Dad woke up early and smelled the breakfast, waking up Gabrielle by saying that the kids were making breakfast. Dad came downstairs first, and Mark asked him to set the table. Gabrielle came down as we were finishing up, and she sits down, not offering to help. While Gabrielle commented about how it smells just like a restaurant she went to in France and couldn't wait to taste everything, Mark and I served Dad and our plates before putting everything back. Gabrielle looked at us confused. I looked at her. Oh, I thought you were going to a French cafe for breakfast, I said. You did write on the receipt at the diner that you thought it was cute Americans think they're good cooks if they haven't set foot in a real kitchen and you wanted someone to prove you wrong. Dad looked at Gabrielle, his eyes wide as all the color drained from Gabrielle's face. You wrote what? Well, hop to it, I said, sitting down. Enjoy your French breakfast with your French chefs. Gabrielle's face reddened before she left. I don't know if she was embarrassed or angry, but we were able to have a nice breakfast without any of Gabrielle's complaining. She did come back after getting breakfast and has been nice and quiet all day. Hopefully she's learned her lesson and dad grows a backbone. Dad chewed Gabrielle out on what she wrote on the receipt and reminded her that she had promised him she'd be on her best behavior. After all, this restaurant was special to not just Mark and me, but dad as well. Gabrielle defended her actions, saying that it was not what she likes, etc., until she finally blew up and revealed the real reason she threw the tantrum in the restaurant. Thank God the neighbors couldn't hear, otherwise we might have had the cops called on us. It turned out Dad was planning on surprising Gabrielle on a trip to one of the best restaurants in town to celebrate the anniversary of their first date, which was yesterday. She had found the reservations by accident and thought they were going to it the night they arrived when he was planning on taking her tomorrow to make it a real surprise. So us going to the Greasy Spoon instead of the super nice expensive restaurant really upset her and she thought he was catering to his kids instead of her. The argument finally ended when Dad took the couch downstairs, fed up with her BS. So they left this morning. Dad did tell me before they left that he was going to have a serious talk with Gabrielle about her behavior and that until she learned her manners, he was not going to take her out anymore, even to our place. Hopefully that will be either the wake-up call to Gabrielle to behave or to Dad that he should get out. The next story is, I maliciously complied with the ridiculous Navy requirements when pre-form maintenance to my benefit. I was stationed on a ship in the Navy and part of my job was to perform 3M maintenance and material management. Maintenance, which just included things like inspecting and performing preventative maintenance on doors, hatches, fire extinguishers, etc. It wasn't hard work, so as a result, people didn't really treat it all that seriously when doing it, skipping steps and taking shortcuts which wouldn't really matter to a normal person. This was also how I was taught to do it at first when I started. Then after I started getting some experience, my chief, boss, started having me do spot checks. This was how it begun. I did the maintenance item as I would normally do, making sure I didn't accidentally skip anything, but at one point I forgot to put on goggles when handling some silicone jelly. This resulted in an automatic safety failure on the spot check and a reaming from my chief. He told me that he wanted me to follow all the rules, no matter how ridiculous that I pointed out that they were. So this is what I started doing. The next spot check I put on the goggles at the beginning, never removing them even when they fogged up and doubled up on nitrile gloves. I passed and the chief said that it was what he wanted to see. So I started doing even more. I printed out every piece of paperwork on every tool required for the job, ordered pristine tools for all maintenance items so I could have the receipts to prove them, familiarized myself with every NSTM, Naval Ships Technical Manual, and printed out multiple copies, highlighting the applicable sections, printed out both the fleet-wide and the ship-wide manuals on controlling hazardous materials, 
printed out all applicable MSDS sheets, and had all 3M procedures printed out and ready to go. I organized them all into different folders ready to grab and go to any spot check at a moment's notice. After that, I got really good at spot checks. So good that people would go out of their way to watch how I would maliciously comply with every rule during my spot checks. I would pull out my pristine tools with receipts still attached to prove against the paperwork that they were the correct and exact tools called out in the procedure. Wear the appropriate PPE, personal protective equipment, spelled out in the MSDS, hazardous material guides, or procedure, sometimes needing to double up when multiple different types are called out. Pull out NSTMs that have additional steps that aren't included in the procedure on how to perform certain actions and go through them step by step and follow the ridiculous disposal requirements for benign materials simply because they were technically hazmat. Finally, after passing every spot check for over a year with this method, a 3M fleet guy came to do a shipwide inspection and I was the guy that was specifically chosen to do a spot check for him for my department. During the inspection, I went through my pristine tool set, answering all questions with printed out paperwork and the guy was very obviously trying to stump me on something. He even called me out saying that I don't do this all on my other spot checks, at which point my chief and a couple of observers who wanted to watch said that I did. I started measuring out the detergent soap required with my pristine measuring cup, way more than was really needed for the job, then filling up the rest of the bucket two-thirds of the way with water, since the water amount could be approximated. Three gallons of water in a five-gallon bucket, and the inspector seemed particularly irked that I measured out the soap in a non-measured amount of water. I wore two sets of different gloves since what was called out in the procedure was different than what was needed on the MSDS. Double bag the detergent water. The detergent was considered hazmat, in a trash bag with a specific label on it, since that's how to dispose of hazmat, in the shipwide hazmat procedure. And as a finisher I used bar soap that I checked out from hazmat to wash my hands with gloves on per the shipwide hazmat handling procedure, then to wash my hands without gloves with the liquid soap in the bathroom, since I handled hazmat per the fleet hazmat handling procedure. The inspector just got frustrated and left, leaving me as one of the few passing departments on the ship, and possibly the only one he was not able to get me on anything. The last story is… Compliance with SHX roommates agree to pay our gas bill ended up saving me $400. Starting in March, gas company in my area stopped processing startup or shutdown requests to protect their workers from entering homes and properties. My SH roommate was moving out April 1st, and I asked her to transfer the account since we wouldn't be able to do the shutdown or startup process. She said no. She said that she would just continue to Venmo request us until I could open my own account, and then she would cancel hers. Okay, fine. I waited for Venmo requests. And waited, and waited, since that is what we agreed on. I just got a letter in the mail saying there was no account on file for this residence, but there was gas being used. I immediately called to sort things out slightly worried. Apparently she cancelled her account and told him to shut off the gas, on April 1st, the day she moved out. Well, as I mentioned to her, they're not processing those requests, so as far as they're concerned, gas just went into an empty home. As far as they're concerned, I just moved in and put in a startup request, essentially negating the unprocessed shutoff request, so I'll start getting charged for gas now. But there's no record of me ever living here before, so all the gas from April to mid-June is just unaccounted for and not my responsibility. They have no way of charging it to me. So thanks SH Roommate for the free gas. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications.